Hello and welcome to this video on creating your own unique workflow to take your you know procedural animation through to Unity. Um, it, it's just a way of using and keeping the MoGraph tool set procedural as as possible as much as we can, um, and taking that all the way through to you know just a, a final kind of baking process at the end. Now the thing, the problem I had with this was, you know, doing just animations on certain bones and bits and pieces you know it's quite straightforward you just export it goes into the game engine everything works now there are certain scenarios where I'd like really like to use the MoGraph toolset but the problem with that is it kind of doesn't work with the export process um, and it, it it means that we need to kind of bake things down and we kind of lose the procedural nature of what we're doing so I had to think about this and I, I just wanted to kind of find a way to essentially retarget bones so there's almost a sep two separate processes happening so one process would be you know I develop this animation create this animation um, with the MoGraph tool set animate these books you know this works great you know we're done um, then we need to tackle the problem of how do we get this exported out into a game engine so the which we could bake you know we could we could essentially bake everything but then it becomes kind of destructive and how do you make changes on that um it becomes a bit of a problem okay so the way i looked at this is i would just create what i needed with the mograph kind of tool set so if i hit play on this you can see what's happening we've got um a fracture object here all these objects inside it and then we're using all these effectors to animate and create this custom animation for what we need and it works really well because obviously the MoGraph tools make this really easy to do really easy to update everything's kind of procedural um, and it works really well now what I need to do is I needed to export a bound um, kind of mesh for each one of these objects so each one has its own bone um, which is bound and then that gets exported out rather than it being like point level animation or bait or limbic or anything like that so that was the, one of the requirements that I needed to do so that had to be done um, and I kind of was thinking about a couple of ways that I could do that to keep it procedural uh, one of the ways was to retarget a sequence of bones onto the top of, on top of the position of each one of these clothes within MoGraph so, um, and then that meaning that I could just once I've got my animation right I'm happy with it I've got bones that are in the exact same kind of space as each one of the clones all I need to do then is just bind them and then export the animation and bake it export it and we're done uh, and it also means that we can go back to adjusting we can just delete that bake work with the original MoGraph tool sets again to make changes if we need to rebake re-export um, and it's kind of less destructive as a process so I'll just show you what I did here so if I just double click on this you can see we've got some espresso now this espresso here let me just get this kind of tool um, so, to, so to start with we have the espresso tag here now that's this espresso tag is relative to the position of this null here okay so and that's quite important for when we're working with this hierarchy object so essentially these the way this hierarchy object is set and you can get it to kind of to traverse in any way you want possible really there's lots of different ways you can use you can traverse based on the kind of sequence of letters that you use now this essentially is to say okay let's go down so it's relative to this this is original position let's go down one level okay and then next and then next and then next okay so that's the way how this hierarchy object works now this works in tandem with the object index uh, so every time we kind of iterate over this hierarchy this is going to change the outputted index number so originally it's going to on the first iteration it'll be zero the next one one the next one two uh, and so on so it's given us this unique number for each loop to then feed into this data node now the data node essentially will allow us to access the data within MoGraph um, and we're specifically referencing here this fracture object which goes 
so, and then you just link the objects together so it's essentially going it knows it needs to read this fracture object okay so it knows it's the fracture object but it doesn't understand which um which clone we're referring to now we we're doing that based on this index number that's being kicked out here so if it's the you know the first clone that needs to be referenced so you know we've got these this list of joints here that we want to retarget and below down here we've got you know all these different clones so let's just say okay this is zero we want to reference the position of this we need to know the position the rotation um, essentially the global matrix of this to retarget that bone and put it back into the same position okay and we're doing that based on this index number so if you put a zero in here it's going to look for the first one which is going to be this essentially and then what we're doing is we're, we're finding the global matrix of this okay and then we're kicking that out and then we're writing that into the global matrix of that joint which essentially will take the position of where the joint is and retarget it to that position okay and then this this so this is just one loop of the iteration and then every time this iterates it's going to kick out a different index number so on the second iteration it's going to kick out one which then refers to this one so it means that this bone gets retargeted to here and then the set, this one gets retargeted and then this one and so if you have the same number of bones as you do the number of objects or kind of um, levels within your fracture object then everything will sync up perfectly okay uh, and this retargeting is doing is is being done live per frame so it's very procedural in this kind of the way it's kind of processed um and you can rework this to however you need it need it to work but the great thing about this is it's a lot less destructive because it means that we can just bake the bones just at the end um, and any changes we need to make we can just lose that bake we can delete all the keyframes from that bake um, go back to the original MoGraph tools, make all the changes we need. These bones get retagged to that position, to the, the position of all those, um, and then you know rebinds, essentially re-export, and then we're done. Okay, so to show you how that would work, then what we would do is we would select all the joints that we need. Um, obviously, you can see. We, we would bind these first okay so you you would bind each one of these so you essentially you would, you, would uh, you know you select your your bone you select your mesh um, and then you go to character commands you know, bind there um, and it just it's just going to then bind that mesh to this now what you could what I would do is I would kind of duplicate this setup so just duplicate your rig here so this is your original kind of setup you go back to this is almost disposable and get will get thrown away so you can you would just use this to kind of bake you know your, your bone to the mesh and then also bake the position of all these kind of um, all your bones if you need to um, if it if it's required for the game engine Okay, so but what will happen is that if you need to make any changes, you just get rid of this, go back to your original kind of rig, make the changes, and then go through that process again. Okay, so I hope this kind of helps give you a bit more confidence in um, just the way you kind of can approach, you know, certain workflows, even if the tools are not particularly ready yet or available, or you know. If, if you if you find yourself working in a destructive process you know just you can kind of just question how you're working and to see if there's easier ways to do things um, just to kind of make your workflow a lot less destructive um, and you don't necessarily even have to wait for you know these features to, to, to come out you know you can make the best of the tools that you currently have and um, you know some of the tools are really powerful already um, you know which can get you like 95% of the way there and um, you know get almost enable you to um, to create what you need um, before you know waiting or requesting any particular